Today we head to the tropics in search of a bucket list capture of holy grail proportions. The fish is called the permit. The aim is to catch it on fly fishing gear and the task has the reputation of being incredibly difficult. Go, 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 you got him. Don't lift you. This mission will possibly be the hardest one we've ever attempted. Strip, 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 keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping. That's pretty satisfying. Yeah. The show is proudly brought to you by Mercury Marine, BCF, ARV, and Spotter's Sunglasses. I'm traveling to Northern Queensland to fish the waters around Hinchinbrook Island. To help my quest, I'm fishing with renowned fishing guide and gun fly angler Clint Isaac, who specializes in targeting fish in the shallows. A huge focus of this trip is to come to these parts and learn from what we see of predatory fish feeding in that shallow water. The world is full of bucket list adventures and when it comes to fishing, there's one that's often whispered about because it's like finding the holy grail and that is to land a fish called a permit on fly fishing gear. I'm intrigued to see if I can meet this challenge in Australian waters, but there's a lot more to this story than first meets the eye. Clint runs his business out of the Australian Fly Fishing Lodge in Cardwell, Queensland. Make yourself at home, right? I've dedicated four days to try to catch a permit and can only wonder if I've given myself enough time. I've travelled to northern Queensland to watch and learn about how tropical apex predators feed in the shallows, but to top it off, there's two species I've never caught on fly fishing gear. It's the permit and the barramundi. Catching a fish like a permit on fly fishing gear has beaten many anglers a whole lot better than I. They are very cautious, and trying to catch them in shallow waters can be frustrating, as they will very often ignore your best efforts. Come down and tip on the fly, hopefully. And I guess the most important thing about the fly is that it needs to be on the bottom. So you want it to sink, you know, the permit of feeding on the bottom, so you want it on the bottom. And most of the time, I just will really want you just to bump the fly just a little bit, just to get the fish's attention. And then hopefully it comes down, tips and eats the fly, yeah. How far do I need to cast? You could put a cast in and it Listening to Clint, I quickly work out the enormity of the task I'm about to undertake. This is a quest that often defies exceptionally good fly anglers, which I can't attest to being. The subtleties required to fool one of these fish are quickly becoming a massive problem in my That's thinking. so good cast, which makes it very hard. The other problem, I've only got one night to get my game plan together because tomorrow we're into it. Clint Isaac has fly fished around the planet and now guides anglers in his home waters. He spends his time learning about the local area, the permit, the barramundi and other species. Ready to go, Nige? Yeah, mate. She's a busy ramp today. Yeah. Weather must be good. <laughs> You're right. How far are we going? Oh, just around the corner here, Nige. We'll hit the flats and get for those permit, mate. <laughs> I'm getting excited. After learning to fly fish at the age of seven, I've since only fly fished occasionally over the past few years. And I'm very nervous about testing my abilities on a fish as wary and hard to catch as the permit. Clint is gonna have to run a very good refresher course. The reality of this dream of mine to catch a permit on fly is that I'm at a hiding to nothing. Fly anglers so much better than I have struggled for years to catch one of these fish. But I reckon in life, sometimes you just gotta have a crack and you just might be surprised about what you learn along the way. And when it comes to learnings, Clint's about to find out just how well I fly cast. And I'm hopefully gonna get some lessons that make me good enough to do this job. <laughs> All right, mate. Show me how far and how well I'm gonna to have to cast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm keen to do this, learn this, um, yeah, this cast of yours. Yeah, okay. The one thing I just want to show you, yep. like I know, you, honestly, you cast them fine enough to fish. Yep. Okay, just with the barras and a lot of casting, I just want it to be a one-two motion and shoot it out. Just let it sink a bit, just till it's out of sight, and then just little bumps. This is a 10-weight line on a nine-weight rod, so it overloads. So you should be able to pick that up, like, you know, pick it all up and shoot it down, basically. Ah, we're going fishing. 
Yep, wind it up, mate. Let's go. Sorted. <laughs> This is one of the main reasons I've travelled all this way, to come and hopefully play with the permit of Hinchinbrook Channel. We're up in the shallows now, let the hunt begin. I've come here to watch the behaviour of tropical estuarine apex predators feeding in shallow water. We're trying to catch them to learn about how they hunt and we expect to come across a range of species. There's only one problem facing me now. Catching fish on a fly adds a level of complexity that I need to address really quickly. Around the planet are similar to look at. They are a tall fish with slim body and downturned mouth. The Atlantic permit Trachonotus falcatus can grow to around 1.2 metres and 30 kilograms, whereas our block eye grows to 1.1 metres and around 15 kilograms. Our anak permit is harder to catch and grows to sizes similar to that of the Atlantic permit. The large pole that Clint uses to push the boat around is for stealth. Fish like Permit will hear the noise of an electric motor a mile away, which means this boat has to be pushed around. This is such an intriguing way to fish. Up in the shallows, Clint's quietly poling around, and all we're doing now is using our eyes to try and find our prey. All right, there you go, there's your shot, mate. From here? 40 feet at 11. Shot. Bit more to your right, yep. bit more to your right. Oh, he's swimming away, just hold it up, don't drop it, don't drop it. Okay, cast now, he's down Where? feeding. Where is he? Yep. Oh. Oh. Lost him. Oh, yeah, 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 got him. Little bumps. Bump it, bump, 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 bump. Hang on a sec. Yeah, he was spooky, that one. He man. was, wasn't he? He was real spooky. When you're waving that line in the air, Just straight he was away, already caught, going. caught a flash, yeah. Okay, watch him, he's coming to the left a bit now. I've, got, I've lost him, where is he? He's there at 10, you got him? Oh, yeah, yeah, got, yeah him? got him. More to your right. Drop it. Good. Bump it quick. Bump, 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 bump. Quicker, quick, quick, quick. Got to be quicker, man. Oh, Try really? to intercept him with the fly. He's done now. So I've got to be quicker than that. Like just to bring the fly into his into path. It. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Righto. Just to bring it into his Is vision. His vision. Yeah, gotcha. Yep. It's always better to be long because yep. you can you, bring it back to you him. You can bring it back if you're short. It's yeah. kind of like yeah. Righto. I gotcha. Not easy conditions, man, that's for sure. <laughs> How good's the game? <laughs> it just slowly chips away, yeah. You know? This would be why they said it was hard. Yeah. Welcome to Tough Flats Fishing. <laughs> We're seeing them. Just oh, can't yeah. get them to uh, cooperate. Well, let's go try another flat, eh, Nige? Had some pretty good shots, close, but uh, anyway. Yeah, I don't like the attitude of the fish in this flat. <laughs> These yeah. fish might be a bit above my pay grade at the moment. <laughs> a huge part of this style of fishing is being able to visibly spot and watch the movements and behaviours of fish. It requires good eyesight, great polarised eyewear and a knowledge of your quarry and how they operate. The science behind why predatory fish come up into these shallows to feed is an interesting one and it's all about risk versus reward because any time a fish comes up into the shallows, it risks predation itself. But they're up here for a reason, there's food, they've just got to come in, eat and hopefully not get eaten themselves. Yeah, we've got some fish there, Nige. Yep, 11 o'clock, about 40 feet. Yep, there. You got him? Yep, good. Ah, oh, come on. Leave it, leave it. Pick up your slack, pick up your slack, give it a bump. Bump it again, bump it again. Recast straight away. Keep stripping, strip, 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 fast, 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 fast. He's eating it. You got him. 16 pound, let him go. Woo hoo! -hoo! Nice job, yes. bro. Yes! <laughs> Queenie, bro, good Woo! job. <laughs> good job, my man. Oh, good spotting, dude. No Great worries. spotting. Look Ooh. at that. Wine, 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 <laughs> as fast as you can. Yeah. That's it. You got him. Woo. Nice. Oh. Good job, bro. Every fish that you can catch visually like that <laughs> is so, so How cool exciting. was the eight, man? That is awesome. How cool was the eight? So oh. much has happened with these fish this morning in terms of faster, slower, trying to read the behaviour of these fish, try to get them to eat. They have been fussy today, let's get one to eat. <laughs> 
That's pretty satisfying. Yeah. Woo. Good job, Nige. <laughs> Well fish, bro. Those oh. fast strips, eh? Yeah. Just sped it up and it tr it's crossed him over, man. Just the speed of it. Good job, bro. Oh, yes. Playing up. Doing everything for us. I know. As a queen, he should. Oh, no, we're getting close. We are close. We are close, my man. You good? Yep. Got him there. Yeah. You beauty. There you go, yeah. Nige. Oh, hey. yes. The sight fish queenie. Thank you, mate. That <laughs> Ain't is that little so fly. well spotted. That's really cool, man. Well, the writing is on the wall. The tide has fallen away. The northeaster is up. I've been guided very well today. We've certainly found fish. I've made every mistake possible <laughs> with the fly on the shallows. I have caught my first queen fish on a fly, yep. but I think it's time to call cool quits on today go back for a well-earned beverage and a meal and i can think about how to make it better tomorrow thanks mate yep, we... no worries let's do it tomorrow night out of here i've been seriously tested and apart from one queen fish feel a lot like i've failed today Clint was able to put me onto the fish, and due to casting short, not working the fly well, and spooking fish, I've fallen short of a species like the permit. Tomorrow will be a big day, and I've got to start fishing better, so as to show Clint and myself that all this time hasn't been wasted. A beautiful day dawns across Hinchinbrook Island, and with a little cloud around and potentially less visibility early on in the day, our plans may have to change slightly. We're rested and back again for day two. Not quite on the flats yet, we're gonna wait for the sun to get up, and while we're waiting, hopefully, knock off one of these barramundi, and that will make me feel so much better <laughs> after making a few mistakes yesterday. Sounds good, right, Nigel, right. let's do it. Same line, just a bit longer, Nigel. Yep. Perfect, bro. Perfect. Look at him hitting the spot every <laughs> time. Absolutely perfect. I'll get you over there a bit. Just fish this close stuff, mate. Yep. Couple more over that, and then I'll push you over into that stuff. You'll see over that while we do this barra fishing, we fish a lot of stuff close, hey? Yep. Like really close. Anyone that's not familiar with the process of fly fishing, I'm gonna give you a crash course in 30 seconds. And it all starts with your fly, which is an artificial creation which is meant to imitate a food supply. The problem is, it's light, so it needs a delivery tool. And that comes in the form of this heavy line and a fly rod. Between the line, you've got a leader, so the fish don't see it. And the beauty of these fly lines is they come in different qualities. So you've got floating, slightly sinking, and then faster sinking lines, and then some variations. Then all it needs is someone that can cast it properly, and you're in the money when it comes to catching a fish on a fly. Oh, there he is, big barra floating out there, oh, 11 yeah. o'clock, yeah. got him, go. Got him. Where shall I land it? Just, ne just next to his nose, mate. Bump it, bump, bump it. The fly's not moving, bro. He's, oh, bump, 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 he's eating it. Bump, set the hook, set the hook. Bump, 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 bump. Oh my <sighs> God, father, bro. You lifted your rod twice. That was my first shot at a barra. <laughs> Learning all the ways not to do it. <laughs> all the work and then just miss it up on the last bit. <laughs> just the strike. Time to go to the flats. I'm running out of mistakes. I reckon I've made most of them. <laughs> Fortune has to change. As a lure angler, you're conditioned to lifting the rod when you get a bite. This is a big no-no when fly fishing. The rod has to stay low and the strike is all done through the line. If you lift, you miss. That's another mistake to add to the list. It's back to the shallows to sight cast at ghosts again. And if my day wasn't going to plan before, it isn't getting any easier. He's just there now. Look a bit more to your left, Nige. 11.30, now 12 o'clock. That's in there? Yep. Not too short. short, man. Leave it, leave it, leave it. 
Strip it now. Bump, 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 bump. Little bumps, little bumps, little bumps. Go, 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 go. You got him. Go, go. Go, go, go. You got him. Don't lift your rod. No, honestly, it's a slightest thing. It's a bit like that. It, it, yeah, just, it's just that little movement, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, dude. That was just... Oh, patience being tested. <laughs> it is, eh? The fly was in the spot. Oh, it makes a nice change. I got a fly in the right spot. The fish <laughs> just decided it wasn't going to eat it. What's going on? All right, Nige, that'll do us, buddy. Sun's getting low. I think it's uh, time to head in. We had a good crack today, mate. Sometimes you got to admit when a battle has been lost. And I think we've got a little bit of time left here with Clint. Might be time to restore some pride and at least satisfy one of the objectives I came all this way for. Time for the lodge, mate. Sounds Let's good, nice. Here. Let's go. All my fears about how hard this job would be are coming home to roost. And to make it worse, I can't help but feel for Clint, who's trying his hardest to help me. If I can retrain some of that muscle memory and land a few casts, I can turn this around, but I'm fast running out of time. A night's sleep always changes perspective. And after a good rest, we wake to a perfect northern Queensland morning. And part of me thinks that a couple of fish will turn everything around in my favour. I've just got to find a way to catch them. Hinchinbrook Island has a reputation of making its own weather. This calm before the storm is deceptive, as the forecast is for a change to roll through today. We're going hard early in case we get chased off the water through the day. Yesterday was a big day of failures on my behalf. And it gets to the point where you start feeling responsible, knowing that there's a guide at the back poling this boat around all day, finding the fish, giving me the opportunity to watch them and then miss them. So today's a day of reckoning. To say I'm determined would be an understatement. Just in there, mate. Yep, just in there, Nigel. Right, mate. Let's Chase see some barras, buddy. We can smack some. Yep, and just a touch to your right where that log comes in the water, mate. That's it, over the top of it, perfect. Fish it a little bit quicker, it's just shallow there. And again, Nigel, that's perfect. Good. There you go. There he is, bump it. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Strip, 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 good fish. Strip, 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 strip. Hit rod low. Yeah, bro. Strip, 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 strip. You. Nice, brother. Oh. Oh, bust me. Good fish, man. Oh, dude. Oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Not much you can say. Oh, bro. That's so unlucky. You did everything spot on. Yeah, he's choked that up, eh? That's what Barramundi <laughs> on fire can do to you. Oh, it's dude, so what's going on? Oh, what's going on, what's going on man? <laughs> oh. I am absolutely gutted right now. The Mangrove Aquarium is in full swing, with residents out and about, and active with the sense of a weather change coming. With the visibility dropping, the work to catch a barra becomes harder again. Strip, strip, strip. Oh, it's a little Monday. <laughs> There's a barramundi! <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but there's a barramundi. Oh, we got one to the boat. The other one was, a... anyway. Yeah, we lost the, the first one that came out of that corner was a chunk. He didn't really connect. He just, he almost like boiled on it and took off. Yeah. We got his mate though. A fair bit smaller, but we have one. We have a barramundi on fly in the boat. <laughs> what a cute little fish. And uh, they don't have to be big when they bucket this fish. If it's your first one, you don't complain how big they are, how they come in the boat. And the really cool thing about this fish is look how dark it is. Now, we're in a saltwater environment, and typically a saltwater fish a lot more silver, big golden tails. This is a lot about where this fish is living, and it's tucked away right in the deep, dark corners of the mangroves. And that colour has so well matched in with its surroundings. It has been sitting there with those little eyes close together waiting for a little shrimp or bait fish to come to his space and one did, it just unfortunately wasn't the real thing. Yeah, my biggest barra in the world. You're certainly <laughs> my first on the fly. 
Good job, Norge. Hey. Number one. <laughs> Number one to the boat. We've come close, but you got one. Okay. I would say size-wise, we can only get better from here, don't I think you we can upgrade from that one. <laughs> Yes, Glenn. Nice job. Yeah, hey, two goes at it. Working that little shrimp fly through that timber. Man, it's amazing how close you can get to them. Yeah, That's poling, poling the boat. Yeah, you're right, it's right on the rod tip. It's a bit bit surreal if you've never done Ooh. it. There you there go. He's playing up for us. Little jumper. That fly is what's doing the damage. Beauty. Just, the, just such a lifelike imitation of a prawn just pulsing through this timber. And these fish, they're just sitting tucked away in that shade. And all they see is this, what looks like a stray prawn coming puffing over. The bit that gets me is how quick the eat is. And I think one of the biggest lessons I've had chasing these fish on fly is how quickly they eat and reject what you've got. And if you're not on your game and you don't quickly set that hook, it's all over in the blink of an eye. It's just such a different dynamic to when you're fishing with a lure with trebles hanging off it. Off you go, mate. See you later. You can see all of this dead timber in the background. And it's, uh, in a way, it's scar tissue along the Hinchinbrook banks in lieu of the latest cyclone that went through here. And it would have seemed really bad at the time, but it's just nature's way of pruning, really just clearing out a big stretch of land. You can see all the new growth starting. At the same time, it's dropped a lot of timber in this water, which now creates really valuable habitat for our fishes and crustaceans. It's all part of the natural system. Good job, buddy. Woo. Hey? They're getting bigger. <laughs> nice getting bigger. Nice. He's got a bit of work to do here. He wants to go home. That's oh. it. I might be slowly working this stuff out, mate. <laughs> Chairman that hook on. It's taking me a while. Good job, mate. Look at that. Aren't they just one of our coolest predatory fish? Oh, yes. Beauty. Have a look at that. I'm quite impressed, mostly with that hook hold because I have missed so many of these fish in the last, I don't know how many hours of casting at them. It's been an intriguing battle of just learning where, where to put a fly. You learn so much having someone like Clint that watches them every single day, knows their hidey holes. Out of all this timbered bank side, there's certain areas that they're gonna hold in more predominantly. And if you can find that spot, get that fly in there and make it look like the real thing, you get the bite. And that's only half the battle. Next bit, <laughs> sticking that hook in there and making sure it stays there. The weather is now looking worse and the water has dropped around the mangroves with this tide. Clint comes up with a plan to go and fish the edges of the Hinchinbrook Channel for species like queenfish and trevally that should be hunting the drop off. Oh yes, Clinton! There we go. You legend. Jeez, he demolished it. It's all about moving some water. That's what I was saying, eh? On these edges, you just don't know what can come up, bud. We started the morning just working the tides, trying to chase a few barramundis around the snags. And as that tide dropped out, Clint's made the absolutely correct call to run down the front and try and pick some of these pressure edges and see if we can play with some pelagics. Yeah, so sometimes it's good to fish that poppy, you know, to get that action. A popper flies like a surface fly that skips across the water and makes a splash. And, uh, yeah, you just fish it really erratically and it gets the fish excited. The good thing about the popper too, compared to a deeper fly, I guess, is the popper creates that splash so, you know, it'll come from a further distance to have a look. I actually think it is a good queenie, Nige. Yeah, big one. Yes, brother! <laughs> there we have go. Have a look at that. It's a good queenie, eh? Good job, mate. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. You can see why they're so powerful. Look at the fin structure. If you add all that surface area of fins yep. with that body, you can see why they've got such oh. amazing bursts of speed and they can, you know, normally they jump and stuff like that. This one. Yeah, and that lightning fast take, eh? Oh, awesome. We'll get him out. They don't like being out of water too yeah, long. Yeah, get him back in the water. 
pelagic species like this love to be on the move and they really need that oxygenated water pushing through the gill systems which is why we don't like keeping them out of the water too long and if we're getting photographs and the like we very often put the fish backwards and forwards but in, in and out of the water just to keep them wet keep them oxygenated we're going to let it have a rest now and then let it swim back to join its mates this one probably about a three four year old fish definitely an adult and still on its way to growing twice that size matey you can go and join the herd Oh, and all we're doing at the moment is we're sitting in what you'd call an ambush spot and Clint's just picked it out out of all the, the ledge area along here he's picked out this spot because it just had the best combination of current movement and edge and it's a spot where predators will come along and stop here for a feed and if you just put a fly in the right spot stands to reason it's going to get belted one of the hardest aspects I've found this trip is breaking old habits and what you call muscle memory when you're so used to lure fishing or bait fishing and the moment you feel a fish you lift your rod this is going against every aspect of that to try and keep that rod down use the line to set the hook use the line to fight that first stage of the battle and to not lift the rod has been such a hard habit to break and i've failed on a number of occasions with it i think a couple of times i might have just got it right hopefully this is one of them a giant queen fish, ah, just so, so cool. And so important too in systems like this. Oh. We often talk about the, the giant trevally and the queen fish being some of our most important pelagics just because there's so many of them. So it's part of the, the food web and keeping everything in balance, those two species are seen as really, really important. Yep, and yep. it means we love catching them, but we also look after them. It's the reason we put so many of them back. There you go, nice. Yes. Yeah. You. There's the prize of the channel waters. And these guys do get up in the flats and very often when you're out here doing what Clint does best, chasing species like permit, you see these guys in the giant tree valley getting up in the shallows too. So it shows you they won't be afraid of getting up wherever the food is. They'll uh, have little ambush runs off the channel up into these shallow areas, grab a feed and head back out there. And at the moment, we're doing our best to ambush them as they come in. Gotcha. Hit him, hit him, hit gotcha. him. Hard. I've hit him, man, I've hit him. Keep stripping. There you go. You hit him, I'll say I can't hit him any harder. Quinn, <laughs> I'm just doing these and he wants to go the other way. Yeah, oh, beauty. Good job. That's a man. bigger one, too. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Fish. Here he goes again. Here he goes. Go, brother. Here he oh. goes. <laughs> Greyhounded in the distance. And he's gone across the channel. <laughs> run into what you call the backing now which is uh, you've obviously got around about 30 meters of fly line and then the backing and this is your savior right now because that fish has run a long way past the fly line and it's super exciting to see a big fish like that first bell to surface fly then run that far and then jump greyhound style it's pretty hard to beat that on the end of a fly rod <laughs> Good stuff. Very man. hard to beat that on the end of the fire. <laughs> maybe a permit, maybe, but <laughs> yeah. look at the size of this one. <laughs> it's a pig. It's a proper one. Yeah, it's a pig. Yeah, nice. Yes. Hey. That's a chunk. Yes, we've got applause from the locals. <laughs> it must go. be a good one. There you go, Norwich. Thanks, mate. Whoa. That's a chunk. Hey. Look at that. And what a way to catch it. That's a on surface. Big deep fish. It's a chunk of a queen fish. Woo. Look at that for a head. That's just a bull-headed queen fish if ever I've seen one. How about that porpoising in the distance? That's great. Oh, that's a great that. fish. All right. They great don't like fish. being out of water these, so I'm really, really careful to get this back right now. So we'll get him back in the water. And uh let it go. I just love the fin systems on big species like this. It just explains why they go so fast when they hook, but it also shows you a lot about how they hunt. They've got such good propulsion systems. And this fish, hard to believe, they still got a fair bit of growing to do. They get up to around that 1.2, 1.3 meter mark, so they can get truly sizable. And this one's got enough air back into it. It's time to say goodbye. Oh!
Oh, hang on, he's still there. I thought he popped me. Oh, what are you doing, bro? You want some? You want some help up there? You want me to give you some instruction or what? Oh man, stay tight, bro. I don't know what Sorry, happened. Yeah, I think another one might have eaten it. Realising that a quick change of direction from this fish has created a knot in the line, we resort to hand-to-hand -hand combat to get spot. it to the boat. Yeah, Nige. There we go. Good job, mate. Now, I know you want to get this in the water really quickly because there's queenies just pushing their way down this bank, and I reckon it won't be long before we see another one of these on board. Let's Happy get another let one. Let it go? Yeah, let him Good go, job, mate. Bro. Let's do it again. Today, we've had highs and lows. Big Barra have escaped, but others have finally stayed on, so that at last I can tick another one off the bucket list. And the day has been capped off with a mind-blowing session on Big Queenfish. Tomorrow's my last day here, and the weather is looking average, and I'm all but kissing goodbye my chances of hooking a permit. My last day here dawns partly cloudy with an uncertain weather forecast. The plan is to simply let the cloud cover dictate what we can and can't do. Time is spent early on the flats looking for cruising fish, but none are moving. With clouds building, we decide to fish the channel with what Clint refers to as a dredging style of fishing. The plan is to wait for clearer skies and hopefully get another shot at the flats. Got it, mate. Nice, Clinton. Little jeet. Is it a little GT? Yes. Oh, nice, mate. Shut away. Just off that ledge there, Nige, on that uh, white clouds of that bait fish style fly. Well, you called it. You said, well, we've lost light. We might as well put our, our abilities to use somewhere else and what? Two yeah. casts into it, your way. <laughs> yeah, nice little fish. Nice. nice. A juvenile giant trevally, they get a whole lot bigger in these parts and just interesting when you talk to Clint about how often the really big ones get up in these shallows and feed and in this case just off the edge, this guy's cruising along with the tide waiting for the right time to get up on these flats and ambush stuff. Hopefully as soon as that sun comes back out we'll be out there sight fishing bigger ones of these and hopefully a permit. Yeah, better size Jeep mate. There are plenty of juvenile giant trevally running the edge, and we have a ball playing with a fisher cast for a good hour or two. Strip, strip. Oh, yeah. They're such aggressive predators. I like the fact that on the reef and places like that, oh, look what he's just coughed up. Look at that. That's what oh. he's eating. Whiting. Little whiting, are they? Wow. There you go. Oh. Have a look at that. We talk about fish being able to ingest a big meal, and scientists will often tell you up to a third the length of a lot of fish they can handle if they can get it in their mouth. And this pretty much proves that point. If I hang that whiting alongside that giant trevally, which is one no means a big one, that fish is easily in that quarter to a third the length of the fish. And he hasn't just coughed up one, he's coughed up two. Greedy little critter, just shows you. They come across a meal and they're hungry and they can fit it in, it goes in. Right, Righto, greedy. Now you coughed up your lunch, off you go. Clouds in this part of the world can move really quickly. And that line of clouds I reckon is about 20, 30 minutes away from giving us our sun back and we're heading straight back to those flats and see what we can drum up. With the cloud clearing for the last hour of available light, we hit the shallows for what is now my very last chance at a permit. Oh, just right here, bro. Right, right here, right here, right here. Right here, more to your right. Just leave it, leave it. It's in little bump. Hey. Little bump, leave it. You need to be a bit longer into your left. Got him flash there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Long cast, long cast. Slow it down, mate. Good, good, leave that. Leave it. Get ready for the eight, leave it. Leave it, he's on it, leave it. You got him. Yeah, got him. Strip, 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 keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping. Strip, 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 keep stripping. Keep stripping, bro. He's going, he's going, he's going. Keep stripping, keep stripping. Keep stripping. Keep fast, 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 fast. Let him go. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Let him go. Keep stripping. 
Keep stripping. You're kidding me. There you go. Well done, Clint. All right, mate. That's the biggest job. adrenaline rush. One, 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 one. One, one. Stay on the fish, mate. Stay tight. There's a dream on the end of this. Clint has worked so hard at this. Well fished, Nige. Well fished. Oh, I've made every mistake. Every single one so far. Cast wrong. Lifted rods. Wave rods. Spooked them. And finally to get an eat. This bit so far quite satisfying. Just to have told the fish a lie. And it's eating it. Worked hard for that one, buddy. Oh, dude, I'm shaking so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be. But I am, because so much work's gone into it. As a guide, mate, is this one of the most satisfying things that you see? Oh, yeah, that's why I do this, buddy. So much work goes into it. That's it. You've seen how our day's panned out, and it's not over until the end of the day, mate, so. It never is, you just was, don't give up, do you? That was awesome. Oh, that was pretty violent. It's getting tight. Funny, after all that time, it's still pretty green, still isn't it? Still got a bit in it, yeah. Powerful fish. Oh, deep breaths. It's deep, heart in the mouth stuff, breath. isn't it, Nige? Eh? You can see why people love chasing these yeah. fish, man. It's like nothing like them. Come on, fella. We know you're tired. We're all tired. Oh, don't do that to me. a bit violent there. You just grubbed in, eh? Yeah. Shoved his face in the sand. Can you bring him on this side? Yep, I can. Give us a bit of slack. There you go, mate. Yes! Hey, you yes. did it, mate. Yes! There it is. A long, long <laughs> last. Oh. Hey. Mwah. Lifelong dream, my man. It was a dream for well so, done. so long. Hey. To see it here. <laughs> you did it, yes. buddy. Yes. Well done. You've worked so hard for this fish, mate. I can see the exhilaration on you, hey? That's awesome. There's not a lot of words now. No. Beautiful Hinchinbrook permit, mate. The ultimate prize. Congratulations, <laughs> mate. Congratulations. All right, let's, All right, let's, let's get him get back in the water, eh? This is one of the coolest fish I've ever had to play with. Uh -huh. And it's been a dream for a long time. But if you look at it straight away, you notice what a peculiar looking fish. They're almost a bit ET-like. Describe why it's developed a head like that. Well, you can see the features, Nige. Like the, first of all, that square nose basically means a lot of digging and eating at the bottom. Yep. So exactly how you fish. So they're looking for crabs or they get on the rocks and eat around mussel beds. Yep. So it's a very strong flat nose. You see with pelagic fish like mackerel and tunas, they've got a very pointy nose. So you can you can see the distinctive snub nose, or well, they call it a snub nose dart also, and you can see because of that. Inside the mouth there, there is a serious crusher plate. Yes. Very serious. So if you had a vice and you crushed it up as hard as you can, that's what this fish will do yeah. to like its crabs and oysters and stuff. And it is so quick. It's like a, yeah, and a lot of pressure. So they're amazing fish, you know, big eyes so they can see a lot also. And uh, this one, we've given them a couple of quick drinks off camera because we're looking after this. It's such a special prize that you just can't catch it once. And we're now going to let it go for good and right. wave it goodbye. Good job, my man. Hey, give you a good little breather. You've done well. You've played the game. It's time to say see you later. And off you go. You absolute legend, <laughs> Clint. Hey. Good job, my mate. Good job. <laughs> Awesome. I'm so happy right now, I'm so happy. <laughs> that's it, that's what it's about. You worked hard, Nigel, I don't know what to say, but congratulations, mate. I'll be thinking about that for it's a lot of days to fish. come. trophy fish, yeah, you did well, my man. Heading back to the ramp, I'm still in a happy state of disbelief that I've managed this incredibly hard to reach goal. I've tested Clint's resolve over the past few days, and it's satisfying to repay his efforts with seeing one of these special fish in the boat. To come to Hinchinbrook and realise a lifelong dream is something that's still sinking in, but what I hadn't counted on is how much I'd learn about a new style of fishing and the behaviour of the fishes we chose to target. Now if this is something you think you might be interested in, I highly recommend coming to this place and hooking up with this man. Is nice. And how's that for a view? Beautiful. In life and fishing, there's always a new goal to reach and adventure to plan for. I believe it's this aspect of the pastime that keeps us young at heart. 
the Hinchinbrook Channel with its fierce shallow water predators. Bucket list captures and challenges has proved to be the trip of a lifetime with oh so many lessons. But around the corner on this fishing journey, there will shortly be another challenge and another chapter to write. For details on all the equipment we used in today's show, head to our website, afn.com.au, follow the links to the fishing show, and we'll tell you exactly what we used. And to stay up to date with our latest adventures, head to our Facebook page, AFN Fishing and Outdoors, and you'll find out exactly where we are and when. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.